wanted to say congratulations. This uh, new track, Entwined, is absolutely fantastic. And we're about to play it for the first time on our show. So I was wondering if you could start off by telling our listeners a little bit about what they can expect to hear on this track. I would love to, ladies and gentlemen. You can expect to hear some incredible future funk Neo Soul R&B sounds all the way from the Sunshine Coast. It's a groovy track, and it's all about two souls becoming entwined into one. So tell us a little bit about what sparked this track, mate. Was there something in your own life that actually sparked this one? Oh, most definitely. I've been a part of a really beautiful relationship for the last eight years now uh, with someone called Gisela. Uh, She makes uh, original music too. We both have separate original bands that we're both a part of and uh honestly this this whole album that i've been working on is just a big old love album big love letter to my partner so um entwined is definitely about us coming together and and um there's more tracks to come on the album that that touch on how our relationship has grown but this one's definitely about how our two souls became entwined How did you find writing an album like this? Like you said, it's an album that is basically a love letter. As a songwriter, how did you find the experience writing it? I actually had a lot lot of joy throughout this album. Um, A lot of my other albums that I've written didn't really have much of a cohesive direction. This one was definitely more uh, thought out and planned. I hadn't written music for about five or six years. um, And I'd been on tour with my partner, touring for that time. And I just... We COVID hit, I had a bit of time, a little bit of money, and I really wanted to create something again. So this album is a product of of creative spare time. Now, we've heard your sound over the years evolve a lot. Tell us a little bit about how you've arrived at the sound that we will hear on this album. Oh, that's a great question. Um, So, you know, I think every artist develops a sound as they they continue to make music. Um, This one's clearly just a snapshot of what I thought was cool at the time. Um, And, you know, my music taste has always gone from folk and and, and, a whole bunch of pop and uh, all these different genres, but it's really arrived at the neo-soul R&B thing. And it's my niche. It's where I feel the most comfortable. And uh, I just don't hear too many Aussie artists trying to emulate these sounds and, and, and make music that kind of uh, resembles things like D'Angelo and, and Maxwell and these old soul legends. Uh, I just wanted to make an album that paid homage to that in my new future funk way. Definitely. Well, you just touched a little bit on my next question, but what kind of music did you grow up listening to? E- eclectic, very eclectic. My family, you know, they chuck Hootie and the Blowfish and Guns and Roses on in the car and we listen to Counting Crows and... And then, obviously, got into Guitar Hero, so heard all the, the guitar legends. That was awesome. And then I, I've been playing music for 10 years now, so as I've grown more in the industry, I've gotten into, obviously, the jazz and the, the neo-soul, and that's where the, the sounds are riding now. And I'm sure it's, it's just the beginning. It'll go somewhere else in the next year or two, I'm sure. Definitely. Now, you mentioned before that um, it was during the COVID time that you were able to sit down and work on this album. Did that affect anything at all, or did the fact that we're in lockdowns and stuff like that make it easier for you to work? It was a bit of both, actually. I've been very fortunate to tour and play on cruise ships and and be touring for years now, so my... uh my database of people that I get to jam with has grown exponentially. Uh, I play with some of the best players. I'm very lucky. And uh, in this song, Darren Muller, who is a Yamaha endorsed drummer, uh, one of my favorites, possibly my favorite drummer. Um, I would say my favorite. And uh, I reached out to him and we've always talked about making music together. And he actually recorded his parts from home uh, in his home studio. So, uh, and same with the bass player, Mark Perrick. Uh, recorded his parts from home, and then the keys parts were recorded uh, at my friend's house with me present. So it's kind of a mixed match of of recording from home and and recording in a studio together. Having things like cruise ships stop, that must have been a big shock to your system. As As an artist, how did you get through that time? Because we're hearing some absolute horror stories coming out now of of how musicians had to do some pretty dreadful jobs during that time to make ends meet. How did you actually go during that time? I am definitely one of the lucky ones. My partner and I, we lost everything in a day. All of our long-term contracts, everything we had, over $50,000 worth of work in one day, wiped out. 
um, huge uncertainty. And I was very lucky that the largest music shop uh, in Queensland, Malula Bar Music, happened to give me a job in this time uh, as a guitar tech and luthier. So I've been improving my abilities. I'm there today, actually. I've just stepped out uh, from my guitar workshop. And so luckily, they have really, they helped me with the consistency and have been very accommodating to my busy schedule as a musician, um, but they really got me through. Awesome. Now, of course, Stonewax worked with you on this album as well, and he's a guest on our show today. So tell us a little bit about how that working relationship started between you two and what he's like to work with. Oh, he's a dream. He's a a dreamy one, that's for sure. Um, My partner, Jazz, went to an open mic night and met Steve. She went to the studio, Yamanui Recording Studios up in Keel Mountain, and uh, we got to meet and start working with Paulie B, Lord Tanuki himself, um, who produces people like Ziggy Albert and a couple of other large names, George. And um, and then Steve was a huge part of that process too, and Steve was our main guy. So we did all of our tracking and the majority of our mixing with Steve and then got Paulie B in for those final tweaks at the end. So Steve was a dream to work with, uh, very accommodating, and he could really make any, any idea that I had he would bring to life in a heartbeat he's awesome awesome so tell us a little bit about what your plans are for the rest of the year now of course we've got entwined about to be played on our show there's an album as well what are your plans now for the rest of the year my goodness thank you so much for asking uh so i've got another single coming out soon called love stoned that was the first single i wrote in amsterdam right before covid hit and uh and then i've got another two singles coming out after that uh with evergreen pr down in melbourne And uh, the whole album will come out on my birthday this year, my 30th birthday, the 27th of October. Um, And I'm going to be doing a big album launch right at Maloolaba Music. Uh, So it's going to be beautiful. Awesome. Are you hoping to also um, do a little bit of touring as well, perhaps travel into interstate for some shows? Most definitely. I had the pleasure last year of performing with my eight-piece band at Calandra Music Festival. Um, And so that band is raring and ready to go, tightly rehearsed, and uh, we're very excited to get back onto the festival scene this year and start showing people this awesome music that we've been making. Awesome. Well, Chris, we are going to play Entwined on the show right now, so what would you like to say to everybody out there listening before they take a listen to this amazing track? Guys, thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Thank you so much, Dave, for for this interview, and um, I really hope you like it. This is the sort of music that I love, and if anyone else resonates with it, don't be afraid to reach out to me, Chris Argy, uh, and I'm looking forward to coming and visiting you guys wherever you are soon.